So if you play blues gigs or sit in at blues jams, you'll know that certain types of tunes come up a lot. And a slow blues is one of those song types that's an absolute must know. Tunes like The Sky Is Crying or Have You Ever Loved a Woman are staples of a good blues repertoire. So in this lesson, I'm going to take you through a little crash course on how to play a slow blues. Now, this is not going to be a blues soloing lesson, but really a lesson on certain things that you have to know before you step on stage, like how to take an intro, some basic comping, how to play fills around a singer, and endings. My name is Jack Roosh. Welcome to my channel. Let's get into it. So there's a lot of things that go into playing a tune on stage with a band that don't really get talked about a lot in lessons. But this is the kind of stuff that if you're not prepared for can become a potential train wreck when you step on stage. So one of the things that's really important to be aware of is how to count off a tune and how to play a good intro. Now with these slow blues type songs, it's very common to start on the five chord of the progression and then play through the turnaround section. So from the five down to the four and then the turnaround section of the four. So that'll be how you'll kick off a tune. And as the lead guitar player, it's your role to kind of take the intro and play something to lead the band in and set up the tune. Now, these types of songs are in what's called a 12-8 time signature, but you can count these tunes in with a simple four count where each count represents three eighth notes of the uh, 12 8 measure. So um, to kick it off, I'm going to play uh, a very basic intro. Uh, we'll have a count off and then I'll play the intro. Now, this tune is going to be in the key of A and it's a very basic three chord 12 bar blues. One, two, So this intro is just a very simple single note line that follows along with the chord changes. We're going to start out by walking right up to the root of the five chord, then chromatic down to the root of the four chord, and then this little kind of standard uh, pentatonic blues lick. Right, and then over the turnaround section, Again, just tracking the chords. I'm playing the third of the one chord up to the fifth and then down to the root of the four chord as it does that quick little change in the turnaround section. And then, again, kind of bluesy major pentatonic vocabulary there. So there's a million variations on these types of intro uh, phrases and intro lines. Um, this is just one of many, but as a lead guitar player or as the guitar player in a blues band, it's going to be your job to uh, be able to kind of take the reins and lead the band into a tune and set it up this way. All right, so the next thing we need to tackle is some basic comping ideas. Now, there's a few go-to chord voicings we can use for this style of blues. And one of my favorites is to play these ninth chord voicings, right? So in the key of A, for an A9 voicing, we can play this shape right here. Now, this is a rootless voicing. We're going to play the major third of the chord, followed by the flat seventh, followed by the ninth, and the fifth on top, right? And this is a really great, really common, typical voicing for this type of slow blues. Now, what's great about this is within this chord, you've got an E minor triad, right, made out of the uh, 
fifth flat seventh and ninth right so it's like an upper structure triad for an a7 and what we can do is we can slide that up a whole step right this is a really common sound both of these are upper structure triads uh, which work great over a7 and what's great about that is anywhere you know these triads you can do the same move so i can play uh, e minor to f sharp minor all over the fretboard Right, and we can do the same thing over all the chords of the progression. So as we move to the four chord, we can play this D9 voicing, right? And we have, again, the third, flat seven, ninth, and fifth. And for that, we've got an A minor triad on top, and that can be slid up and down. Right, and we can do that exact same move over the five chord. Right, so now I'll play through the form um, and comp some rhythm using these really nice, really common ninth chord voicings. And I've played a little melody on the organ that's sort of taking the place of what would be the lead vocal. So you can kind of hear the context uh, that we're going for. All right, check it out. So next up, let's look at some fills and call and response type things we can play around the vocal melody. This is a really uh, typical thing you'll hear in this style of blues and something that you'll be expected to know as a guitar player in a blues band situation. Now, you can really play anything you want for these types of fills. Uh, but I'm going to stick to some single note, kind of pentatonic based blues licks to keep it simple and really keep it stylistically appropriate. Now, all the tabs for all these examples for everything that I'm playing uh, is going to be available over on my Patreon page. And that is a great way to support this channel if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, but... This is gonna be pretty straightforward kind of blues stuff that I would play on a gig. So I'll play through the track now. Um, I'm gonna leave that rhythm guitar part in there. And again, I'm gonna have that organ playing sort of the vocal melody. And, and I'm just gonna play around it, um, adding some little embellishments. Uh, but this will give you a good sense of kind of how to phrase around a singer. You know, you want to be aware and listening to what else is going on in the music. So not stepping on the rhythm guitar part that we played earlier and not stepping on the melody um, and just trying to stay stylistically appropriate and play things that are going to have uh, a good effect. All right, check it out.
so last up and arguably the most important is endings. Now this is the place that's probably most likely to have a potential train wreck if you're not ready for it. But the first thing to be aware of uh, with endings is how to cue an ending and how to pay attention and be aware of cues from other band members. Now if you're the one cueing the ending, you want to make sure that you give a look or a signal to the other band members sometime within that last 12 bars of the blues to let everybody know that that's the last time around and you're going to be ending it. Now, if you're backing up a singer, it's common that the singer is going to cue the end of the band, uh, the end of the song rather. So you want to pay attention and make sure you don't miss those crucial cues. All right. That's very important. Now, just like with intros, uh, with blues endings, there's a million variations. Um, but what I'm going to show you today is what I would call a vocal ending, meaning, um, the singer is going to sing the last line of the vocals, and then the band is going to wrap it up with a simple ending. Now for this, we're going to go up to the five chord and then come down to the four chord and play a hit. And that's going to uh, be where the singer sings the last line of the vocals. And then the band will come in and we'll wrap it up with a simple ending. So here's what it sounds like. Thank you so much for watching this little slow blues crash course. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, a lot of good insights into things that I don't really talk about very often in lessons, but I think are very important. And things that I've learned um, from trial and error and many mistakes on stage as a young musician. Um, like I said before, all the tabs to these examples will be available on my Patreon page. And if you're interested in these kind of blues courses, check out my uh, courses that I've done with True Fire. I'll put the links down in the description. I have a recent course that's all about playing blues rhythm guitar, which is really cool and covers a lot of these same topics in detail. So until next time, happy practicing. Thank you for supporting the channel and I'll catch you next time. Take care.